am really excited about the potential of agents as a means to extend Microsoft 365 Copilot. But in this video, I'm going to take a bit of a departure from what I normally do and look at how you can build declarative agents using Visual Studio Code. Why? Well, these things are stupidly simple because it's pretty much all natural language instructions interpreted by the AI model. And the easiest way to truly demonstrate what's going on in the background is to dig into the code they're built from and show you what's under the hood. So in this video, I'm going to take you through how to set up VS Code to start building agents with Teams Toolkit, provide an example of agents with and without API actions, and show you how to test them in BizChat. Remember, I'm a low code guy, not a pro coder. So absolutely anyone with an interest in this should be able to follow along. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCoursey. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. First, we need to get VS Code. And the simplest way to do this is just to grab it from the Windows Store. So get that downloaded. It might take a couple of minutes to install and then run it. And if you want, set some preferences. Next, we need to get Teams Toolkit, which is an extension built by Microsoft for developing a lot of the extension components you might build for Teams, and by extension, Copilot Agents. Microsoft has this handy installation guide. It lists Node.js and NPM as prereqs, and to get these, you can just head over to the Node.js website and download it. Once you've got that set up, jump into VS Code and head down to the extensions option on the left, and here you'll search for and install Teams Toolkit. And before long, the Teams Toolkit icon will appear on the left quick launch bar too. In Teams Toolkit, select Create New App and select an agent, then Declarative Agent, then No Plugin, then select where you want VS Code to store the files related to this agent. Lastly, give your agent a name and press Enter. A new VS Code window will open. The first thing I want to do here is set up Teams Toolkit to be able to test your agent when it's time. So let's jump down to the Teams Toolkit icon and you're going to log in to Microsoft 365. One thing you might run into is to be able to test, you need to be able to upload custom apps to Teams. And this might be something that isn't available in your tenant. This setting is controlled in the Teams Admin Center under the Setup Policies control and you can create a custom policy to allow this or just set it in your global policy. Just be aware though that this ability can create security issues and should be used carefully in production environments. If you're not sure what to do, seek out more information on this setting. So now we've got everything set up, let's take a look at the files related to our agent to understand how it works. Starting with the app manifest file, this defines the app. You have all the stuff here you would normally see when you add an app to Teams or in Microsoft 365. For publishing an app, this is important. For getting started and testing, not so much. Just remember, if you create something great to get all this filled out, so it makes sense, just as you would if you did the same in Copilot Studio. You can also see here that things like the icons and color scheme are defined. Those icon files are right here. So if you want to change them, go ahead. Again, not something necessary for playing with this, but you can see you have all the bones here that you can modify. So that manifest points to the agent, and that's obviously going to be the complex part with all the detailed and confusing AI code in there, right? Well, no, bare bones, this is an agent. And all you see here are the three core things you'd need to fill out if you started doing this in Agent Builder in BizChat or Copilot Studio. Your agent needs a name, a description, and instructions. There's nothing at all complicated going on here. A declarative agent is, as its basics, just a vehicle to pass a consistent set of instructions to Copilot in a repeatable way. The point of them is that you're using all the infrastructure that Microsoft 365 Copilot already gives you and extending it by defining its purpose and manipulating its scope or capabilities in a way that make it tailored for a particular purpose or process. In the instructions file, you just write natural language instructions. And this can be as simple or complex as you like or need for the purpose you're working through. 
on Microsoft Learn, there's a whole article devoted to writing better instructions. Or you can start with the instructions from one of Microsoft's pre-built agents and tailor it for your needs. But beyond instructions, there are other capabilities you could give your agent to make it more helpful too. But before we dig into that, if this overview is valuable to you, please do give it a like to help it get in front of more interested people. Also, if you want to see more like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Here, I've added a couple of capabilities to my declarativeagent.json file. One is web search. This allows the agent to grab results from the web. And in this case, I've scoped it down to my company website. And the other is access to OneDrive and SharePoint. And without any scoping, it just gets the same access as Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is to see anything I have access to in Microsoft 365. But you can scope it down to files or sites, etc. However, if you want to add a more refined scope and other capabilities, there is a Microsoft Learn help file that outlines all of those options. I can also here add starter prompts. These are just as you'd expect and help frame the use of the agent for any user. If you don't add any, a couple of generic starters will display for every agent. Here I have a fairly basic set of instructions. I just want the agent to help with providing business focused summaries and overviews of the topics requested by the user using the knowledge sources. And that's all I need to do to test this. I'll head back to Teams Toolkit. I'll hit the provision option. And once it's done provisioning, I'll choose preview your Teams app and choose my browser. In this preview view, I can interact with my agent and test it. And if I want to update it, I'll just make that update in VS Code, save my files, reprovision and refresh. It's as easy as that. But what if I want to build a declarative agent that can act on another service? That's a lot more complex, right? Well, it depends. Assuming your external service can be defined in a standard open API or Swagger definition file, and it aligns with a few other requirements. For example, there are authentication types that you could use with open API that don't work with declarative agents. It really is not that much more complex. I've built out an open API definition file for a demonstrative API I published just for this testing. It doesn't do anything apart from output some information that looks like a web store orders. But once you've got the open API file you want to work with, you can just go ahead and build your declarative agent. This time, I'm going to go through the same process, but instead of selecting no plugin, I'm going to add a plugin from my file. You select what actions you want to add, and then you go ahead and build the agent as you did before. And now you see we have the same outline of our agent with two big differences. In the declarative agent manifest file, I now have reference to an action related to that open API plugin. And if I jump into the AI plugin.json file, I see that I have my API definition broken down into functions pulled from the open API definition. Those action descriptions are important for this. And within each function, I have options I can customize like a basic adaptive card to show how that type of data should show up as a reference in my agent responses. Now, don't get me wrong, you can certainly see there's a level of complexity to understanding what's going on here that you don't get if you're just pulling actions into the wizard-based designer you have in Copilot Studio. But to anyone who has worked with custom connectors in Power Platform, this will look pretty familiar, particularly if you've done some stuff that drives adaptive cards into apps like Teams too. Everything that's going on here is using building blocks that are probably familiar to the majority of low-code makers, and you can just manipulate how they are going to be used with natural language. Here you can see I've built out a very simple set of instructions to explain to the agent how to access the API capabilities. Can it get more complex than this? Yes, but the complexity is about giving it more detailed instructions in natural language, not learning some coding language in order to direct the work of the agent. So let's go ahead and provision and test this agent. And in my test view, I can just say to it to show me those orders, and it'll go ahead and choose the right action, pull that information out, and present it to me, and when I hover over a reference, I can see the adaptive card. It really is as simple as that. 
With so much going on in the world of productivity AI, working out how to get the best from this technology can be time consuming and confusing. I help businesses like yours with their co-pilot adoption journey, from advisory help on the selection of the right AI tools, to technical advice with their implementation, to leadership and end user training, and support with extended its capabilities across your operations, using things like the declarative agents we're looking at today. Whether you are just thinking about which AI solution to choose, or if you're already in the midst of using Copilot, I'll help you to maximize your return on your investment in AI. Check out the links down below and get in touch to start working with me. And when you're finished with building an agent, if you want to push something that you make here into day-to-day -day production, you can just download the type of zip file that you would usually get for a Teams application and take it through whatever life cycle you have for that type of resource normally. It really is very straightforward. Now, the purpose of this video today isn't to say that everyone should jump from the agent builder in BizChat or Copilot Studio into VS Code, although there are certainly things I found beneficial about this approach. But instead to highlight just how powerful yet simple the concept of this new agent wrapper for Copilot extensibility truly is. When you're building a declarative agent, it is truly the quality of your instructions and your ability to iterate through instructions to find the right result that drives the capacity of your agent to deliver what you need. There's nothing else hidden that's going on. You are simply instructing Copilot's underlying technology in exactly the same way you are when you're prompting. You are just doing so in a readily repeatable wrapper that has associated with it a set of capabilities that directly align to whatever it is you're trying to achieve. And while this is powerful, you will run into certain limitations, just as we run into limitations when we're writing prompts. And it's at that point we can choose to take a different path and jump from declarative agents into custom agents in Copilot Studio or elsewhere, which add for us more capabilities to specifically direct how the agent is going to behave, not just through instructional understanding, but through defined paths of logic, which may include natural language understanding and interpretation, but also many of the other tools we have available to make software do what we want. But it is amazing what you can do with instructions plus a large language model. And understanding the power of this, not just for chat experiences like ChatGPT or Copilot, but as we embark on new technologies like autonomous agents, is essential for everyone in this space. It might be time to dust off your SOPs and work out whether you can re-engineer them as AI instructions, as in this new world, realizing that very expensive system integration project you've been putting off might just be little more complicated than doing that. What do you think? Have you tried building agents, whether in VS Code or elsewhere? And what's your experience of the power of instructions to do things with AI that would have been overly complex or expensive with other solutions? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.